a question many of us have is this what is this life all about the contradiction is many of us call ourselves christians but we are living our lives and planning our lives as if we are going to be alive on this earth forever this is unrealistic and in a way it's a delusion the reality is this life is short temporary and fast moving and who among us can be so confident to say that we'll be alive even till tomorrow this life is short temporary and fast moving and people are dying all around us in different ages and stages of life now this is a natural law it would be foolish and unwise to assume or take for granted and assume that our turn to leave this earth may not come some day soon as christians we're called to live in the power of the resurrection and we're called to orient ourselves and direct ourselves in the light of eternal truth and that which lasts forever which is eternal life with the lord jesus the bible tells us in second corinthians 4 verse 18 we look not at what can be seen but what cannot be seen because what can be seen is temporary what cannot be seen is eternal so how do we allow god to mold ourselves into this way of thinking into making our decisions in the light of eternal truth into preparing ourselves for the day of judgment and in desiring to be ready to meet the lord on that day and about our eternal salvation is this something we need to consider and think over or is it something we just take for granted and assume is going to happen now here's a reminder to all of us including myself to be watchful to be alert and to be careful that we don't fall into a trap of some blind belief or false assumptions regarding our eternal calling in christ through his word god gives us necessary direction if i were to pose this question to you where is eternity located your natural response would be heaven but the reality is that hell exists too so we have choices to make heaven or hell and these choices need good decision making and this good decision making requires priorities to be set in our lives st paul tells us in his letter to the philippians in chapter 2 that we have to work out our salvation with trembling and with fear he affirms that it works is part of the economy of salvation it requires some effort from us however he clarifies in verse 13 it is god who works for his good purpose in you so it is god's grace working with our own free will and therefore we have choices to make choices that will lead us to heaven or to hell and that means priorities to set in our lives god bless the pleasures of the world are very tempting we think we need things to be happy my security becomes dependent on the things i have acquired and not jesus the rock luke 12:19 to 21 and i'll say to myself you have plenty of grain laid up for many years take life easy eat drink and be merry but god said to him you fool this very night your life will be demanded from you then who will get what you have prepared for yourself this is how it will be for whoever stores up things for themselves but is not rich toward god preparing for eternity is a continuous process It is important therefore that even as we are busy in our daily lives we also must not forget to be rich toward God rich in giving him his due time 
rich in serving his people and rich in sharing the gifts that he has given us. Jesus is and must be our first priority. Loving him and loving our neighbor will ensure that eternity is surely ours. Praise Jesus. Mark 8.36 says, For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his life? So we have in this verse uh, two uh, concepts. One is the world. What does uh, Jesus mean by the world? By the world he means not only uh, material pleasures, worldly pleasures, all that the world can offer us, a uh, career, uh, vain glory, and uh, delighting in our uh, friendships, relationships, contacts, powerful contacts, etc., etc. So do we put our trust in these that are the fruit of our efforts and probably also the fruit of uh, the family in which we were born? And Jesus says, no. Of what use is it to have gained the whole world, but to have lost his soul? So then we need to come back and see what Jesus means by soul. In Greek, the word is pneuma and also CK. So the, the soul is everything that is spiritual, everything that is God's uh, presence in us. So if we are to give primacy to the soul, the previous verse enlightens us and says, For whoever would lose his life for my sake will save it, and whoever saves his life will lose it. So then we are uh, asked to give up all these attachments in order to put Christ at the center of our life. Perhaps the most quoted Bible verse ever is John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. But what exactly is this eternal life? Remember that God's son Jesus died for it. So it must be something important. Is eternal life like the perfect holiday destination? You have all the comforts of life. Or is it like the ultimate retirement plan? You finish all your business here and then have an eternity of bliss. If that's all eternal life is, would Jesus have died for it? While John 3.16 tells us that God's son Jesus died so that I can have eternal life, John 17.3 tells us what exactly this eternal life is. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So do you want to know this Jesus? Do you want to know his Father, the one true God? Jesus said, if you eat my body and drink my blood, you have eternal life. So today, right now, take a step closer towards Jesus and you can have eternal life today. The greatest hope in our Christian life is hope for the eternal life and that's our focus. And this earthly life 
is the preparatory period for each one of us to get sanctified in order to attain that great, wonderful, glorious life. My dear brothers and sisters, our Lord Jesus Christ paid the price for our sins on the cross by shedding his precious blood and made us heirs of his kingdom. And he promised us that he will come back again to gather his flocks. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, he will come back. His second coming is for sure and it's imminent. But when it will happen, nobody knows about it except God the Almighty. Now the question is, are we ready to receive him? So we have to be alert. We have to be ready. Wake up from our sleep. Wake up from our sleep. As Gospel Luke chapter 12, 40 says, you also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. He is coming at an unexpected hour. Like a thief, he will come back. Hallelujah. So, my dear brothers and sisters, wake up, wake up, be alert and be ready to receive him. Any moment it can happen and be ready, be prepared for that glorious moment. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. John chapter 14 verses 2 and 3 tell us, In my father's house there are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, that where I am you may be also. Jesus is telling us he is gone to prepare a place for us because he wants us to be with him. Our inheritance is nothing less than heaven. So let us ask God throughout our life and from this day onwards that we help cooperate with God as he prepares us to go to our heavenly abode. We are only here temporarily. And as we prepare ourselves to go to our heavenly abode, our life here will be far, become far more meaningful, loving, understanding, patient, kind, and generous because we are waiting to go to our heavenly home.